A while back, I saw a documentary that showed that Sweden is really kicking butt in terms of global obesity. It seems to be scurrying around the problem a bit better than everyone else. And as I started looking into that, I also started looking into the healthiest cities in the world, the happiest cities in the world, most quality of life, social work, da 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 And once again, Sweden and Scandinavia is just check, 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 check. I am a Canadian citizen originally from Edmonton, now living in Vancouver, but I also live half the year in a town called Sundsvall, north of Stockholm. So I spend a lot of time in Stockholm. And we love a healthy habits video. Today I'm going on a solo trip to Stockholm and gonna bring you guys to the healthy habits unique to Stockholm that I think makes Stockholm a city that it's almost hard not to have a high quality of life in. I don't wanna talk about it. Habit number one, crosswalks everywhere. Now we hear walkable cities, but what makes walkable cities? One thing is just the accessibility to walk from place to place, distance, but also just the frequency of streets that you can easily walk across. In Stockholm specifically, there's so many crosswalks. And you know when you press the button, at least in Edmonton, you just wait and wait and wait, they're actually responsive. Like I know if I click that button, it's gonna change to green walking signal pretty darn soon. Bonus habit is I feel most places in Sweden don't charge for different milk. I got lactose free, just, I don't know why, I just felt like it. I'd pick a new milk every time. But it's not like oat milk, almond milk, anything else is an additional charge. Habit number two is the accessibility of nice gyms. Now, I'm not just talking about Equinox and stuff. I mean, bougie gyms at affordable prices. I have a membership at STC. It's the equivalent to like $50 a month Canadian. Not exactly cheap, but it's like the quality of an Equinox at the price of just like a regular box gym. The amount of bougie gyms. I mean, the gyms influencers go to film that because it's so aesthetic. For under $50 Canadian, which is like $35 American, is crazy. Speaking of which, just to show how nice gyms are. I'm just staying at a very average hotel. I picked it just because it's the cheapest one downtown. And look how nice this gym is. Like every gym in this city. It's, it's not like bougie, like obnoxious, but it's just so nice, has everything you need. Habit number three, just the accessibility of fitness classes. No, you don't have to do a fitness class to be healthy, but there's Pilates, there's Berries, there's CrossFit, there's ones for seniors, there's sports for kids. Like you name a fitness class, a sport, an activity, Stockholm has it for you. Trees are in green, the ocean is gray, sky is a vague blue, come away. My room is a mess, it could use a hand. My favorite TV shows to capture in. I'm starving, let's go get some food. Habit number four is the amount of nature in downtown. Now I come from the city of Vancouver. If you wanna talk about a city that's got nature, hint to a future video. As someone who's lived in like downtown cities like Toronto that really lack it, like yeah, they got a park you can go to, but your just daily commute doesn't have trees. You start to feel like this ickiness, like we crave nature. And Stockholm has so many just little parks, trees, like you can hear birds chirping in the middle of like a major downtown city, listen. Like you can just take your lunch break and you can just go. <sighs> and I feel cities that do that just always, it, you just feel healthier. Bear with me that it's the middle of winter. So the trees are looking sparse and not very luscious. <laughs> I would say bike friendly and it definitely is, but the first uh, Swedish city I lived in was Malmo, which is actually like the third most bike friendly city in the world. It's the third biggest city in Sweden, which is across the bridge from Copenhagen, the literally most bike friendly city in the world. So it's, it's hard to say that when I've seen Malmo and Copenhagen, but I'll still give it like a half point. This can't be a surprise. I think I'll let it slide. Next 
habit, Swedish fashion, Scandinavian cores having its whole moment on TikTok, especially over the summer. Everyone is very well dressed in comparison to like Canada, just more like business casual, but it's practical. Think wool jackets, trousers, sneakers, like everything's very functional. You can tell they're warm, so they're gonna go outside, but they can go into a business meeting. Versus I feel a lot of business attire in like North America, for example, you can be outside for like a couple minutes. And your shoes, not as practical. It, it just doesn't give, you wanna go on a walk on your lunch break as much. Yes, I'm stereotyping, but generally. Speaking of Swedish fashion, Now, obviously like athleisure isn't Swedish, but on this street alone, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, over 10 of the maybe like 20 shops are all like outdoors, sports specific. Here's another one. Like it's all very North Face, Lulu. It, it just goes to show the accessibility of even the proper clothes to wear, not just even workouts, but like specific kind of outdoors activity. Here's another, here's a whole running. See, this whole store is specialized just for running. There was the one for camping. Here's another one for skiing across the street. Every second store is focused on some kind of activity. I'm about to do something that's gonna make a lot of you gasp. Water quality for a major city is phenomenal. It tastes so good. Canada. You got great drinking water, but Sweden's is better. It is better. So yeah, it's a hell of a lot easier to stay hydrated when you can literally drink for the tap, which not every city you can do. Speaking of drinking water. Normally when I travel, I always bring AG1 and I have it with me every single day because it's like my nutritional insurance. I don't know if I'm gonna get a single fruit or vegetable when I travel, especially some airports. But the reality is when I'm in Stockholm is like the one city I do not even think, like I know I'll get so much fruits and vegetables. Guilty, then why do you care about taking AG1? But I still bring AG1 because it's not just your vitamins and minerals. Instead of having to carry a thousand supplements with me when I travel, I got my prebiotics, probiotics, adaptogens. I used to be the person that carried a thousand supplements when I traveled, but I would way rather have a cute outfit, an extra cute outfit than supplements. And then I can just throw in a couple of these bad boys in my suitcase. It takes up way less space. And the benefit is the highest of quality. I trust AG1 so much because it's NSF certified as people like Andrew Huberman and Peter Atia that provide guidance to the company. For me, it's just totally helped my energy and digestion. And honestly, it tastes great. It's easy, it's simple, it's green, it's a vibe. And you've probably heard of AG1, you've probably seen it, and this is the month to try it, because it got a little special bonus this month for you guys. If you click my link down in the description, you'll get a one year supply of vitamin D3K2 and 10, yes, 10 travel packs with your first purchase. Thank you, AG1, for sponsoring my video. Next habit is the train station subway is so accessible. And I feel any city that has good public transit is naturally gonna be a bit healthier. And look how beautiful the subway system is in Stockholm. Like, why would you not wanna take it? It's a photo walk. Another habit is just a classic Swedish diet is so high in omega-3s. There's a lot of salmon, fatty fish, a lot of seafood. I'm a little always skeptical of saying healthy habits and diet because I feel what people consider a healthy diet is so individual. I have my own definition of what I consider a nutritious, balanced diet. But like, for example, the reason I I'm in, in Sweden is because my boyfriend plays hockey here. And there's a couple other imports, so North Americans, that their boyfriends play on the team. And some of them don't like the Swedish food. Like they think it's too high in carbs, too high in the dairy. So they actually find it very hard to eat healthy here versus like my body loves carbs and dairy. And so I actually feel like my digestion is in Sweden. The accessibility of healthy lunches and meals is crazy in Sweden, specifically in Stockholm. The availability a healthy bowl with extras. Here in Stockholm, it's pretty much the exact same price as like fast food back in Canada or US, almost.
Next habit is work-life balance. Now, I've talked about FICA before, and it doesn't sound that groundbreaking, but I think it's what makes Stockholm and Sweden Sweden. It's a break in the middle of the day to stop and have a coffee with a friend and a sweet treat. And we don't do that in North America. We get the biggest coffee on the go. We work until we burst when it would be so simple if we just stopped, took 10, 15 minutes, unwound, and got going. But we don't do that. <laughs> And oh, the cafes and bakeries in Stockholm. Oh my God. And I guess it's not just the fika, it's just that work-life balance. They really have nailed down in Scandinavia, specifically Stockholm. July, Stockholm's empty. Everyone's on vacation. Everyone goes on vacation. Not a week, weeks. The whole country just slows down. It's expected. It's not like you're grinding less. It's just like a part of the culture that you need that break. You have work-life balance. You have time for your family. You have time for your friends. You have time for hobbies. Okay, this next one could be very controversial, but I'm going to say it anyways. Nicotine <laughs> in Stockholm and Sweden. Vaping. I see no one. Those nicotine packs, they originated in Sweden. And I'm not saying that's healthy, but I think it's a lot better to be doing that than smoking or vaping. It's a lesser of two evils, so I'm gonna throw this in here as a bonus one. Let me introduce you to Swedish snus. Some have tobacco, others are tobacco free. There are those nicotine patches you may have seen pop up over the last two years, but they've been in Sweden for a long, long, long time. And in Sweden, they're a way of life. Now, if they're a gateway that gets you addicted to nicotine, that's obviously not good. But I will say it is drastically different how little vaping or smoking I see in Sweden compared to the amount of vaping I see in North America and the amount of smoking I see in the rest of Europe. Is a nicotine addiction healthy? No, I'm not saying that, but my personal opinion is it's better than inhaling the smoke of a cigarette. But as of right now, that's just my personal opinion and by no means am I promoting them. Stay away, stay away. <laughs> I'm just like, if you had to pick one of the three, it, it seems to be the lesser of the two evils, but the jury's still out and studies are still happening. This could actually make for an interesting video topic. Hmm. Thanks to Peter Atia and Andrew Huberman, we all know the health benefits of sauna and nowhere is sauna a bigger part of their lives than Scandinavia? Okay. Finland specifically is number one in the world for sauna use. It also is a big part of other cultures such as Turkey, Russia, Japan, and other Baltic nations. Living here has opened my eyes to how much sauna is a part of their culture, specifically in Northern Sweden. And what's on the border of Northern Sweden? The number one sauna use place in the world, Finland. Ironic? I think not. Saunas in Sweden. It's just a way of life. It's so much more common. You can see them everywhere. People have them in their homes. They're a bit more affordable. You just It's just a way of life. But I can't help but mention is just the government help here in Stockholm. This says it best. When I went for a massage after my ballet, he asked me if I get a health number. So I was like, no, I'm Canadian. I was like, ooh, makes me wonder. Do you guys get free massages? And they're like, yeah, pretty much everyone gets at least five massages in their benefits a year. I'm like... You gotta work for Google or Apple in Canada for that to happen. Okay, I'm exaggerating. There's more companies than Apple and Google that give massage benefits, but your girl gets no massage benefits from the government. Wait a second. Isn't YouTube owned by Google? Hmm. I'm just kidding, YouTube algorithm. I love you. I pray to you every night. Please don't hurt me. I, I, need, I need no massage benefits. It's okay. <laughs> There's so many more resources and so much more programs to have a safety net in Sweden, which I think is really admirable. I, I don't want to get political, but I just have noticed all Swedes, for the most part, even though it's still a very innovative country, it has invented things like Spotify. And these, it, it still has that balance of everyone has their basic needs met for the most part. It's not perfect. I'm not an expert in this. Just there's a less of a stress of survival here in Sweden. And I think when you're not trying to survive, you can thrive. It's cheesy, but it's true. It's so hard to care about your health when you're just trying to survive. I've been there. When you're like, I just need to get to the next day. I just need to pay my bills. I just need to get food of any sort so I don't starve. You, you don't care the nutrients in it. And because everyone has that baseline, it just gives a little bit more flexibility to care about your health and less stress. And I think the lack of stress is incredibly important. And that's why we look at Scandinavia and we're like, whoa, it seems like this foreign land. And sometimes when I'm here, I'm like, this isn't real. <laughs> it's not perfect, but they do some things really well. 
Now I'm headed to the, back to the hotel to show the last one, which is actually the weirdest thing. And when I first saw it, I was like, what? What the hell are you doing? For the last healthy habit, it is right here on the bed, but not specifically this bed. This bed's actually a bad example. Insert my bed back in Sunsville. The two duvet of Sweden. This is a game changer. I think this could change the world. Okay, Sweden takes it to the extreme and most hotels we go to, you don't get a king, you don't get a queen as a couple, you get two single beds pushed together, which I, I don't like that, but it also means two duvets and it is actually a little rare to have a single duvet. Each couple gets their own side. What does that mean? Better quality of sleep. At first, I get it. It seems a little like, oh, I don't want to sleep with you. You still get to sleep with the person, but no one's hogging the blanket. You, I cocoon. I like to cocoon. And I do think it improves your quality of sleep. I don't know. I'm just one of those people that I like to cuddle to the point I go to bed. And the second I want to actually go to sleep, I'm rolling over. You stay over there. <laughs> In North America, people are like, ooh, you're not sharing a duvet. That means, oh, divorce. Um, no, in Sweden, it's just like, are you a psychopath? Of course you get two duvets. So those are the healthy habits I've noticed in Stockholm. And Stockholm is always ranked in like the top three healthiest, happiest cities in the world. And I think this is just scratching the surface. I, I am very blessed that Stockholm is probably the city I've visited the most outside of Canada that I don't actually live in. I li just live a little north of Stockholm. So I always fly into Stockholm. We travel to Stockholm a lot and I'm hoping to travel more and more. And these are just the observations I notice. So the healthiest subjective, I get it, but I think these are a couple I would love to do more videos. It just makes it accessible for the average person to be more active, more balanced. Just pretty much you're able to easily fill your physical, mental, emotional, financial, and spiritual buckets. And then of course, you know, without getting the nitty gritty, uh, I would love to hear down in the comments. If you're from Stockholm, I actually ran into a bunch of you guys. Um, so thank you for saying hi. You absolutely made my day. That was phenomenal. If you ever see me, come say hi. It it truly makes my day. With this new Her Way to Harmony, I do want to continue to do these healthy habits. I find it fascinating. I think it's a cool, unique way to look at different cultures and just how they live healthy because it's different. Healthy is different on every single person. Also, you can learn some tricks and tips from other cultures I find as well, or also just be like, wow, yeah, it must be easy to just be able to drink tap water. And most importantly, don't take these too deep. The healthy habit trend is a trend definitely right now. And I'm all for it. Cause it's just like little hacks, it's little things you can add to your routine, but like you can also add so much that you get nothing done and you're stressed about it. And if you're stressed, you're not healthy. Add little things step-by-step step, that get you a little bit closer to where you want to be. That's the whole point of the series is harmony, working towards where you want to be, but enjoying the process and not overloading yourself so much that you just jump ship. <laughs> Have a great day. Go pet a dog. Love you guys. Bye.